Hi, so last time we were talking about rho echelon form and rho reduced echelon form. Here is a here is a matrix, a four by four matrix that has been displayed, which is in rho echelon form. The boxed entries three, one, and twelve, which have been highlighted, they are called the pivots. So once you reduce a matrix to rho echelon form. You can read off the pivots. In the next slide, this matrix is not in row echelon form. You have to perform one more row operation. Now, row 3 and row 4 have to be interchanged in order to bring it in row echelon form. This is something that we discussed last time. And how to do the row, uh, row reduced echelon form is also discussed in the next few slides. And that's an example for you. So now let us look at some more examples on row echelon form. So for example, examples of row echelon form, you see a three by three matrix in row echelon form. And then you see a three by five matrix in row echelon form. The pivots have been indicated one, four and one. So boxed entries are pivots. This matrix. 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0 is not in row echelon form. The row operation is not completed. We need to perform one more row operation, namely R2 prime equal to R2 plus R1. When you perform R2 prime equal to R2 plus R1, there is to add to the second row, the first row, we get 0, we get 1, 3, 1, 0, 6, 2. 0, 0, minus 1 and 0, 0, 0. Now it is in row echelon form after you do that. And the pivots are 1, 6 and minus 1. For example, take this matrix. This matrix, this 4 by 6 matrix. This is not in row echelon form. But after performing, a, a, a exchanging the third row and the fourth row, we get a matrix which is in row echelon form. Now again, the pivots are boxed entries, 1, minus 1, and 6. By now, it should be clear what is when is a matrix in row echelon form and when is a matrix not in row echelon form. The row H, after, you, after you reduce the matrix to row echelon form, the matrix looks like this. You got this kind of a pattern. And underneath, you got all zeros. And these stars here are the pivots. And these stars are not zero. You see? You, you, you can you can you can check that these matrices are all of this form. You got this kind of a pattern where you got zeros underneath and we got these stars. So the, these are the uh, notions of pivots, rho echelon forms and pivots. You have plenty of examples now. So now why are pivots and rho echelon form important? Suppose we got a system of say four equations in seven unknowns. We got four equations in seven unknowns. Let us assume that the seven unknowns are x1, x2, x3. Excuse me. So let us assume that the let, let us assume that the variables are x1, x2, x7. The initial trial, when you are given four equations in seven unknowns, what you will try you will say that I will regard it, I will push the x5, x6 and x7 term to the right hand side and regard it as a system of four equations in x1, x2, x3 and x4 and I will try to solve these four equations in x1, x2, x3 and x4. Of course, the right hand side now depends on x5, x6 and x7. So after you solve this in x1, x2, x3, x4, the solution will depend on x5, x6 and x7. You may not be able to do this. But assume that you are able to do this. Suppose you are able to do this. No matter what values x5, x6 and x7 take. That is if the solution exists for arbitrary choices of x5, x6 and x7. Then we say that x5, x6 and x7 are free variables. That is I should be able to assign them whatever values I want. <laughs> And then x1, x2, x3, x4 will be functions of x5, x6, and x7. Let us assume, let us now understand why this program may not be uh, feasible. And let us understand this via the Gauss elimination method. Gauss elimination method will also tell you 
how to modify it in case this obvious thing of x1 x2 x3 x4 solving doesn't work some other combination will work let us see what happens let us understand it in the from the point of view of the gauss elimination method so you are given a you are given a system of four equations in seven unknowns right so it's a the matrix is a 4 by 7 matrix and there is an augmented column so all in all it will be a 4 by 8 matrix right so here is you here you see the 4 by 8 matrix which which has some kind of an augmented column of right hand sides and it is in row echelon form the matrix has been reduced to row echelon form the pivots have been encircled now suppose for example now you know that when you do a row echelon form you you pass from a given system of equations to a equivalent system of equations it's an equivalent system of equations so whether you solve the original equation or whether you solve the equivalent equation it is the same the solution set is the same now let us look at this new system of equations the new system of equations the last equation will read 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 plus 0x4 plus 0x5 plus 0x6 Plus zero x seven equal to a. So if a is not zero, the system has no solution whatsoever. So let us assume that a is zero. So Gauss elimination will tell you. Suppose if a is is, is not zero, then the Gauss elimination tells you the system has no solutions. So now let us assume that a is zero, and then see what happens. Suppose the system uh, suppose a is zero, then it basically means that the fourth equation. Simply reads zero equal to zero. It's a tautological equation, so it drops out. So effectively, we have only three equations in seven unknowns. Effectively, we have only three equations in seven unknowns. Okay. So let us write down these three equations. So what are the last equation? Now what are the last equation? What are the second last equation read? The second last equation now reads two x six plus x seven equal to minus one. This is what it happens. So x six and x seven cannot be assigned arbitrary values. I can't say x six x six zero and x seven x zero. I can't take ran. I can't take whatever values I want for s x six and x seven. So it means the original system you cannot you cannot solve the original system for x one x two x three x four by assigning arbitrary values for arbitrary choices for x five x six and x seven. you can't do it therefore the program fails as I, as i mentioned but let it but although the program of solving for x1 x2 x3 x4 has failed we can still see which are the very the point here is that the the choice of the free variables is not correct x5 x6 and x7 are not the free variables all right now let us also look at the gauss let us look at the row echelon form Which columns contain the pivots? The columns that contain the pivots are column one, column four, and column six, right? So the columns containing the pivots are column one, column four, and column six. So now let us keep x one, x four, and x six on the left hand side, and push everything else on the right hand side. Column one, column four, column six, x one, x four, and x six. X one, X four, and X six are kept on the left hand side. Everything else will be transferred to the right hand side. We have three equations. Remember, because the last equation is now dropped out, a, we are assuming that a is zero. So we effectively we have only three equations, and these three equations, when written down, would be. <coughs> so we are keeping X one, X four, and X six. We are keeping X so minus X one. We are keeping on the left hand side. X two. X three being pushed on the right hand side, X four is kept on the on the on the left hand side, X five is being pushed on the right hand side, X seven is being pushed on the right hand side to X six. So what is the first equation? The first equation is minus X one plus X four plus two X six equal to. We already have a one, and we're pushing all these other things to the to the right hand side. This X two two X three is being are being pushed on the right hand side, and there's minus X X five is being pushed on the right hand side. So what is the first equation? Minus X one plus X four plus two X six equal to one minus X two minus two X three plus X five minus three X seven. The first equation is very complicated. X two X three X five and X seven. The non 
the variables correspond to the non pivotal columns the pivotal columns are 1 4 6 those so x1 x4 and x6 are being kept on the left hand side the non pivotal variables are being pushed on the right hand side similarly what is the second equation the second equation will read 4x4 correct 4x4 minus 2x6 others are being pushed to the right right so 4x4 minus 2x6 equal to 1 plus x5 plus 2x7 all right and the last and the third equation reads 2x6 x7 is being pushed to the right hand side so it reads 2x6 equal to minus 1 minus x7 so x6 can be solved in terms of the remaining variables x6 is minus 1 by 1 half minus 1 half x7 then do the back substitution from here now substitute this value over here and obtain x4 x4 can be solved and when you back substitute you get x4 equal to 1/4 of x7 plus 1/4 of x5 and then now you substitute for x4 and x6 back in the first equation and obtain x1 as minus half plus x2 plus 2x3 minus 3 by 4x5 plus 9 by 4x7 remember we have got only three equations in seven unknowns three equations in seven unknowns so four of the variables x2 x3 x5 and x7 have become free variables the variables x1 x4 and x6 are, are correspond to the pivotal columns we have solved for x1 x4 and x6 in terms of x2 x3 x5 and x7 so which are the free variables x2 x3 x5 and x7 are the free variables and x1 x4 and x6 have been expressed in terms of x2 x3 x5 and x7 these free variables can be assigned whatever values you please so so what is the rule the non pivotal columns correspond to the free variables and the solution x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x1 has been written in terms of the free variables x2 is a free variable so don't do anything to that x3 is a free variable x4 has been expressed in terms of the free variables x5 and x6 are all x5 is a free variable x6 has been expressed in terms of the free variables x7 is a free variable so the solution is basically displayed here so now let us do one thing there are seven coordinates in each of the coordinates let us pull out the constant terms the constant not involving the variables minus half in the second position there is no constant so zero third position in the third slot there is no constant so zero in the fourth slot there is no constant so again zero in the fifth slot there are no constant so zero in the sixth slot we got a constant minus half so we got a constant minus half 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 plus let us pull out the all the, from the first slot i pulled out x2 term x2 first slot i pulled out the x2 so the second slot there is x2 third slot fourth slot fifth slot there are no x2 sixth slot seven no x2 is at all so plus x2 times 1100000 now let us pull out all the x3 terms in the first slot there is 2x3 in the second slot there is no x3 the third slot there is an x3 so 201 in the fourth slot is there any x3 no fourth fifth and sixth seventh slot there are no x3s so 0000 and which is and then x5 x5 in the very first slot there is minus 3 by 4 second slot third slot there is no x5 so 0 0 in the fourth slot you see an x5 with a 1 by 4 in the fifth slot there is an x5 with a 1 sixth and seventh slot there are no x5 plus likewise x7 into 9 by 4 0 0 1 by 4 0 minus half 1 so the solution has been written as some constant plus x2 times a vector plus x3 times a vector plus x5 times a vector plus x7 times a vector x2 x3 x5 and x7 are the free variables you can assign them whatever values you want and then you got this constant vector not involving any other free variable so so as x2 x3 x5 x7 can take all possible real values and you got the general solution 
of the system. So this is the way you solve a system of four equations and seven unknowns. You have four equations and seven unknowns. You first write the matter or any number of m equations in n unknowns. You could have m equations in n unknowns. You simply perform the row operations, apply the Gauss elimination method, obtain the row echelon form, obtain the row echelon form. If you get a string of zeros and on the right hand side, it's not zero, then the system will have no solutions. Okay, so that is one case. The other case is that you simply have a string of zeros, in which case that string, the complete string of zeros, including the augmented column, in which case that equation drops out completely from the picture. Okay, one of these two things may happen or the last entry here could be non, suppose for example, in the, la in the last row, instead of a zero, instead of a four, seven position, in the four, seven position, instead of zero, had you had, if you had say minus one, then that will also be a pivot. Then there'll be four pivots here. That's also a possibility. So you've got these various possibilities. You've got to identify the pivots. The non-pivotal columns will be the free variables. In, so in the in the four seven position, had it been a minus one, there'll be four pivots and three non-pivots. So non-pivotal variables, a non-pivotal, the variables corresponding to the non-pivotal columns are the free variables. Okay, and the variables corresponding to the pivotal columns are expressed in terms of the free variables. That, in a nutshell, is the way you solve the uh, system of equations. You will see examples, you will see other examples in the slides. Let's look at, like, let's look at the slides. Let's look at the slides again. So here you see, here he has given this example, example three. Again, three equations in four unknowns. First, the augmented matrix is written down. The row operations are performed. A Gauss elimination method. There are two pivots. There's a string of zeros. So the third equation drops out of the system. There are only two, there are only two equations. And these two equations are written down. The third equation simply says zero equal to zero. That's a tautology. Had it been, had this, had this last entry, the three five entry had it been non-zero then that's a different story you will get zero equal to something which is non-zero that's a contradiction so there is, then you will conclude the system has no solutions but here that doesn't happen here you get all these are zeros and and the and the pivotal column also has a zero so it's consistent and so by back substitution which are the pivotal columns the pivotal columns are column one and column two which are the non-pivotal columns columns three and column four. So which are the free variables X three and X four. So X three and X four are the free variables and you express X one and X two in terms of X three and X four. X three and X four can be given arbitrary values. They can be given any values whatsoever. And you have a solution X one, X two, X three, X four in terms of two free parameters X three and X four. We'll close lecture 2b here.